Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for February 8th, 2023. The time is 6 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting uh, on Zoom and also in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's um, March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Uh, please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, uh, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if tech, uh, technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, otherwise, um, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For, person, uh, for purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room, the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation. Um, information is listed on our agenda, which you can find at the town of Deerfield website under the calendar. You'll see this meeting and you can click on the link to the agenda. On the agenda, there's a toll-free number if you wanna dial in. It's 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. There's also a link for Zoom if you'd like to join by Zoom. And uh, if you are on a phone and you want to, um, you'd want to keep your phone muted uh, by hitting star six for landlines. Um, and then um, if you are going to speak, just state your name, where you're from, and um, wait till all others are finished before you speak. So I'll call the meeting to order. We have a public comment first. If anybody has any items they wanna talk about that are on the agenda tonight, other than the appearances we already have listed, anybody have anything to say? Happy to hear. No, I think everything's related to yep. this. Sounds good. Going once, going twice, okay. So um, we have uh, appearances. The first um, we do have at 6.15, we could take that a little early if you want, because um, I know people are here for that. Um, oh, yeah, Deb, Deb yeah, is Deb, here. Deb's here, right? Do you, want, yeah. do you mind going a little early, Deb? Would that be okay? Uh, sure, yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, okay. hi, good evening. Yeah. Good evening, how are you? Good, how, are, how is everyone? Very good, good. thank you. Good. 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 So I'm here, um, the Ad Hoc Human Rights Committee just started meeting. We had our first meeting last week and um, we had eight members. Um, right. Unfortunately, one member dropped out, but we still have seven and so that's great. And so um, people asked for just clarification of three items, um, which uh, one of the members read, I think in the newspaper and maybe this was um, something that we talked about. And so it's kind of three questions. And just to clarify, you know, one was because you're asking um, the ad hoc committee to report back to give recommendations about um, a human rights committee for the town. And so one function, um, one question is around how uh, the human rights committee would function when a complaint is submitted. And I mean, I could just kind of go through each of them. There's just three. And then okay. if you have any comments about that. Um, the second yeah. one was, how would this committee facilitate solutions to complaints? And the third uh, question was about how would the committees, what would the committee's relationship with town government um, look like or how would that work? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is that yeah? Is that what you all recall? Yeah, it, from my memory, um, just going through your questions here, how would the Human Rights Committee interface with the Deerfield Select Board? That was something, and, and really government as a whole. Um, I was thinking, you know, as it related to uh, number two, how the how would the Human Rights Committee um, mediate human rights issues in the town of Deerfield that kind of what is the process, who is contacted, how does it run its course, you know, and then um, how would the human rights violations be addressed in the town of Deerfield? And I, I guess they're kind of all very similar, like, but maybe I'll, I'd have Tim 
kind of weigh in on this too. What what are your thoughts? Well, um, I think probably the best thing for us to do, I mean, obviously that was one of the reasons why we created the ad hoc committee was to identify, you know, what the goal should be, but also identify what we don't understand about creating a committee like this. Yeah, It might be worth us referring these questions to, you know, legal counsel just to, just to say, we need to define a structure. I mean, you've yeah. talked to other communities I know, and they have, you know, voluminous paperwork that says what the purpose is. And that was part of another thing that we hoped you would achieve, um, you know, to come up with a purpose statement or a mission statement or, mm-hmm. um, you know, what what the uh, purpose of the committee is. Um, but, um, you know, obviously, one of the goals is to have a mechanism, a group or place for people to bring potential complaints or potential violations of human rights or or issues about uh, diversity, equity, inclusion in the community and create um, discussion and awareness. Because uh, when we started this process, Carolyn mentioned that she was not aware of some of the things that uh, had occurred. And um, so that that's a major gap. Um, so uh, that's my, my, my take is to, to get people who, you know, I, I think our legal counsel probably has a lot of, you know, um, information about how the process should work. And as far as would the Human Rights Committee actually be in a mediation role? I don't know. I, I suspect not. But, right. um, you know, this is, again, something that, uh, you know, uh, maybe because of the size of our town, we'll, we'll need to find a way to have that happen. I, I mm-hmm. think that some of the folks on your committee have background in these kinds of issues. So mm-hmm. that's a thing we probably need to dis, you know, to explore more. I, I know I'm very vague, but I apologize. Well, I, I, I guess for me, um, you know, I was hoping, you know, obviously this is being set up as a reactive kind of situation, but I was also hoping it to be proactive. You know, how do you help us as a select board look at our policies, look at our actions that we do on a regular basis? And, and it can be very simple, just our calendar, you know, no meetings on some of the religious holidays right. that are like not Christmas, but you know, any other, yeah. Anything yeah, people that Yom Kippur, you know, that, that when that starts, you know, no, nobody should have meetings on those days. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's just to be more culturally competent. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so it, it can be as simple as looking at our calendar, but it, it also needs to be a place where maybe we're just not aware of stuff because in our community, it doesn't always related to race or religion. <clears throat> we, you know, we have a lot of elders and, mm-hmm. you know, it just it could be mobility issues related to walkers and that no one really thought about, you know, where we could put something for, mm-hmm. you know, someone to rest. Yes. You know, like mm-hmm. we put the sign up here to our front, um, you know, our town clerk, not to spread out because of health reasons, but then there's no place if you're standing in line spread out to sit. To sit. So mm-hmm. maybe it's just put a chair out. Uh, you know, it's just to be more aware, more sensitive, and and as a board to be more thoughtful. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and we're coming from our own perspective. So we might just not be aware. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we're hoping, I mean, at least me, I was hoping this committee would be more helpful and, and be proactive and feel like there was an engaged reason to have, to be part of this committee, not just because we had something that was awful happen. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I'm glad to, to hear you say that. Definitely. I mean, those were, uh, I think members wanted clarification on those uh, that function, but also we're looking at in broader terms prevention, right? If you have more right. education and reaching uh-huh. out and to mm-hmm. departments, to, um, you know, uh, just different um, businesses in town and then having education, having dialogue so that you could prevent a, a yeah. Absolutely. Some kind of a, what, yeah. and, and how do we be sustainable? That's why- mm-hmm. um, you know, had hoped that Dave Wolfram knew what we had, how we operate as a government, what capacity we have mm-hmm. in our offices, which is very little. And that was why it was important to have Jen 
Bartek be part of this? So she, you know, how 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 do normally things get reported? How mm -hmm. does it go from from our police station to over here? Or mm -hmm. is that, you know, I mean, how do things work now? Mm -hmm. And then how do we improve that process? Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm looking for improvement. Sure. Not, and and how and and we we don't have the ability to add staff. Our staff is already stretched, but how do we incorporate it in that situation? Mm -hmm. And how do we be just more mindful? I, I mean, not again, not complicated, but just more sensitive, mm -hmm. and more aware. And 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 how do we educate everybody and being nice and kind? I, I mean, I can't say that enough. So in your um in your first meeting, I don't know how much you drilled down, but I hope it was productive and um, and you probably made some, uh, had some discussion about being proactive and things that you could do as a committee to educate, et cetera. These seem to be sort of like important questions when incidents do occur that need, I think, a legal answer that I, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily prepared to, to give. So while you continue to work, um, we will ask Casey to reach out with these questions mm -hmm. and to the to um, our town council and, and see if we can't get a quick turnaround. Um, when's your next meeting? Do you have one scheduled? Uh, tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, but you know what? We, we also have because, yeah, we've been doing, you know, some some re research. Some of us have been doing research. So there are some town resources. I mean, not town resources, state resources that we already have looked up when there's a human right. rights violation. You know, mm -hmm. there's complaints, there's violations. There's probably a whole continuum, right? right. So yeah. we could always like email you that if you want to, if you want to have uh, the attorney look at look at what's what's there because mm -hmm. this would be departments that, um, you know, a referral would go. But yeah, if you, that would be great. The other thing, I, the other question, or just to clarify, so we had said we would come back to you in a month mm -hmm. and it's a short month, February. I'm thinking we need more than four weeks. Yeah, it takes some um, time. So, <laughs> you know, maybe six weeks. I was thinking, and, and I have to discuss it with the other members and we'll vote on it. But if we could, you know, meet for six weeks and then come, and then we'll come back to you. So in, in mid-March, how does that sound? Fine. I'm fine yeah. with that. I would rather have you be more thoughtful and, yeah. and comfortable. Take the time you need to come yeah. up with a, a workable plan. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's about process. So, you know, you need to have time to have figure out what, what we have the ability to do as far as mm -hmm. process goes. There was one question about, you know, are you allowed to email members directly? Generally, you would really just want to do an email out to set a date, but not deliberate because it because it you would have to kind of do some minutes, I think, right? In open meeting law. Yes. You'd have to just really um, you know, not deliberate, just really deliberate on a date, you know, to meet or something like that, but not sure. discuss, yeah. you know, topics and yeah. Meeting. I did I did look at the um the uh, open meeting, um, you know, rules. But I, I was just thinking about resources because, um, you know, each of us have like a lot of resources to pass back and forth. And um, so, but it sounds like that you would prefer us going through Chris to exchange you have, resources. If you have a resource, right. If you have a resource that you want sent out, can, you send it to Chris and ask Chris to disseminate. Can Casey uh, respond? Oh, so yeah. what I would suggest, and you guys are sort of talking about this, is if there's collaborative information you want to share, Deborah, mm -hmm. send it through a staff person. Okay. Because that staff person can send it out to the entire committee and say, please respond to me only, because that keeps everybody from violating open oh. meeting. Okay. 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 That sounds good. And then I, I'm the chair, so then uh agenda items just come to me i understand right. okay yep all right and decide what's on the agenda yep okay all right that sounds good this is helpful oh, good. and um yeah so we'll we'll keep on plugging away and we'll be back in touch great thank you for your work <laughs> Thanks, really appreciate it. thank you oh, and casey has one uh i have one question deborah yes um i'm looking at the calendar uh -huh. the the board has two meetings in March that are regular meetings like this one. 
do you want to come to the 22nd? Yeah. Uh, maybe or at least have, have sort of a tentative schedule for that. That way we can put it on the agenda. That sounds good. March 22nd. Okay. And if you move and if you need to move it, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, All right. I think that's, yeah, I think that's it for now. Okay. We've got our, our work cut out for us. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you for getting it underway, Deborah. Yeah, really appreciate sure. the work. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. We have a um, we have another hearing uh, or appearance. Uh, Peter Thomas is here to talk about records archiving and collaboration with Comtech Valley Memorial Association. Um, again, we're a little early. Do you want to do other business first? I mean, they're here. I'd rather not waste their whole night if yeah. we want to. Just come up as long as it's all right with you, Peter. That's okay. Approve the minutes. You want? Oh yes, we can approve minutes for sure. You want to do that first? Yeah, just do sounds good. One, right? Yep, we only have one set. I did read them. Um, I will make a motion to approve them. For I'll second the motion. January twenty seventh. Yep. Okay. So we have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good. Good. <laughs> so um, you're discussing kind of the, the records we have both here and mainly the ones in the 1888 building and the safe down there and what we're, we're talking about moving them. And I know yeah. we, we had a brief conversation this weekend. So I'm yeah, not... just to clarify, I'm not talking about the records you have here. Okay. I'm talking about the records that are in the safe. Okay. And it's not 1888, 1888, 1888 building. building, not this safe. We have two. Okay, not the town safe and the town hall. I'm not right. talking about those right. records at all. It's the 1888 building. With the exception is that I worked with the town clerk uh, several years ago to take some primary records that were in the basement and move them into the safe here. Correct. So... What you have is a suite of records that go back to the 17th century. What's in the safe, there are a subset of 1900 to 1920s records. Uh, the rest of them are 19th, 18th, and in rare exceptions, 17th century. Um, I left packets for, yep. for yes, each of we you. Have, went through them all. Yep. And there's a newspaper article in there that kind of outlines the history of the records that are in the other building. Um, when my father was on the Historical Commission in 1973, they went looking for these early town records. And it wasn't until they got a set of bolt cutters and went into the old town assessor's office in Old Deerfield and cut the padlock off a cabinet that nobody knew what was in it, <laughs> that the proprietor's records and the early town meeting records and the selectman records were found. In the moves that occurred since then, uh, they were moved to the bank here, yep. and then apparently moved to the basement somewhere along the line. And when I came back to take care of my dad in 2017, um, I had some time on my hands and I asked around to see where the early records were. Nobody knew. Until finally somebody, and I think it was the town clerk, but I'm not sure. Somebody told me, well, they're probably in the safe in the basement. What basement? Oh, the senior center basement. Okay. So my first encounter was, well, I better go ask the town clerk and see if, you know, if, if they're there. And I said, can I see them? And she said, well, uh, you fill out a little slip of paper. And uh, when I have time, I'll walk over to the building over there and, and see if I can find them. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a month later and I still hadn't heard anything. So I came back and I was a little more pushy. And I said, well, could I just go over and see? And she said, yeah, okay, that's fine. 
So I went over and I go downstairs and, and uh, there's a vacant room, um, a huge safe with a door open, which I ultimately found nobody knows the combination. So right. anybody we ever do shuts that door, that. forget it. We do not close that. Uh, and his two banks of records, uh, there's a dehumidifier sitting in the middle of the floor going full time. Uh, and the hose that goes into the floor drain, which doesn't Does drain. Work. So That's it's just recirculating yeah. damp air. It's a mess. Um, fortunately, um, the records are not moldy. Uh, they've survived somehow. Uh, and in the course of time, I've actually digitized over 9,500 pages of those town reports. Uh, there's a couple of examples of what mm -hmm. the pages look like in there. And I've done that primarily because of my background. Um, I don't think most of you know, but I served on the Advisory Council for Historic Preservation in the state of Vermont for eight years. We were responsible for National Historic Preservation Act compliance. I ran a program at the University of Vermont for 22 years with for state and federal agencies, so they are in compliance. And for the last 20 years before I retired, I worked for the Federal Emergency Management Agency as a historic preservation and environmental consultant advisor to the federal coordinating officers and manager at major disasters across the country. Um, one of my responsibilities was to work with towns and museums and libraries after major disasters had occurred and they had paper records. And I know what's involved when you have a disaster with paper records. Yeah. It's a it huge it. undertaking. The only way to stabilize those wet records is to basically freeze dry them and then vacuum extract the water and then you go through a process of cleaning them. So if I were to take that safe over there and say you had a major disaster and you would have a major disaster because by law in Massachusetts, all town records older than 1870 must be stored and curated at the town's, that's the town's responsibility. So it would cost you probably 30 to 50 grand to stabilize and bring those records back to some usable form if you got water damage. And I say that from firsthand experience. I work with town clerks that are just in tears when their records mm -hmm. were damaged. So ours are not at the moment, which is good. And our plan is to move them. Right. Correct. So I talked with you and I talked with Carolyn offline about just threw out some ideas. And the, I think the willingness is there certainly uh, to move them from the basement and PVMA is willing to store them. And the question, then the other question associated with that is the public records law. Mm -hmm. How do we address the public records law? So I happen to, because of my FEMA connection, I happen to connect have connections to the high, sort of the high muckety mucks in the archives in Massachusetts. So I called uh, the state archivist initially, talked about the situation. And one of his suggestions was, and he says it's a suggestion, you have to talk to I'm she says, I'm not a lawyer, but you'll have to talk to, uh, but this seemed would seem to work is that. What you could do is move the records, but we have an inventory of what's in the records. Mm -hmm. So he said, post the inventory on your website. Do the same thing that you would do with your public inquiries, um, you know, requesting access to a document. You have a form. 
If somebody wants to see any of those records, they could come fill out the form. And if it goes to PVMA, uh, there's a couple of approaches. There's the town clerk could call up the repository and, and simply say, we've got somebody who's interested in seeing X, Y, and Z. We have the paperwork. They filled it out. And um, we'll just send send them up there, and they'll have the material ready for them. <laughs> now, I got to tell you that I'm not anticipating a run on the on the PVMA. As far as I know, I'm the only one that's used those documents in 50 years. So my understanding is that you've already digitized a bunch of those records. Yep. I've, di and I've digitized have... the proprietor's records, the town meeting records up to 1883, the selectman's yep. records, and a bunch of the tax records and a whole bunch of loose records. And so, so and you have inventories of that and digital copies of that. I do. And you could provide those and we could provide a link online for that i would be what i would be willing to do um and i've already given it to pvma and historic deerfield and some other researchers who are doing work yeah uh is to provide the town with a copy of the digital version Did of all of these work? records i mean i just i, t I tallied it up earlier i've got nine thousand five hundred and sixty five pages that's a lot of these which are not in loose pages right what i've done is i've taken i've photographed them I've uh, rectified the, the photographs and cleaned them up so that mm -hmm. you can actually read them better than the originals. Right. Put them into a Word doc and then rebound that Word doc in the same form that it exists in the archives. Yeah. So all you do is you go get a Word doc and you open it up to page 20 and it's page 20 of, of the, the records. In the book. And you also have the the town meeting records and the proprietor's records in the safe in here. Correct. And those were archivally stabilized in 2008. Yeah. So they're in good shape. They're in glassine yep. uh, envelopes. Um, so whether you um, want to move those with a collection or leave them right where, we, right them right where they are, are. I, I yep. they're on the first shelf as you go into the safe so yep. you can have a look if you want but if we have a digital but all if, the other if stuff you've got a request for um you know i want to see the town minutes you can, the town clerk doesn't have to call anybody and just right you know provide the book yeah um now let me say this about digitization in order to do the nearly 10,000 pages it took me about 475 hours. Right. It's a lot of work. So, and I haven't touched it. I haven't scratched what's over there that could be digitized. Mm -hmm. But the other part of it is why would we bother? It's I mean, is, is, is one thing about, you know, town meeting and proprietor's records and that sort of thing. But do we really need to do school taxes from 1865? No. I say no. It's not worth digitizing. It's a lot of money. But it is worth getting them out of there because right. if we don't, something's going to happen to them. Yeah. And so I think on the basis of what I have, I'm perfectly willing to give the town all those digital records. You could you could put them up on your web. Well, that's what we're hoping. Then, yeah. then if somebody I mean, has could, a request, they can do it go right to the website. You digitize and done. It, is, yeah. it so, takes less effort and time. Right. For town staff to respond and right. understand, and I think yeah. we have enough of that requirements for those yeah. those responses. Right? Well, for Here. those, but probably not school tax records from right. blah blah. Oh no, well, see, there's a lot of stuff of the, that nobody is going to look at. It will right. be inventory in a spot, right. so if right. somebody truly right. was doing a study at UMass, they could come down and look right. at that. At but I gave you an example uh, several years ago for Hatfield. Several years ago, I worked with a town clerk in Hatfield. Yep. I digitized their vital records, their early vital records. And now the, the town clerk has them up on her webpage. So if people are doing genealogy, they can simply go in, dial into the town site, yep. to town clerk, click on vital statistics. There you have the digitized records right there. Right. Now, it's really critical for Hatfield because 
there was a the Massachusetts law back in the 19th century, late 19th century, that required all towns in Massachusetts to publish their vital statistics up to 1850. Deerfield did. We have a book in mm -hmm. the town office for all of those vital records. I can also provide that digitally. Hatfield does not. They never copied their vital records. So now they're available nationwide yeah. on the town website. And we could do the same thing here. Right. So a couple of questions. I mean, it, it seems logical that these are, yes, they're public records, but they're also historical documents. And Absolutely. A specialty of PBMA is to preserve historical documents. So uh, to the extent that um, these documents will be probably only looked at by researchers, um, you know, and they are from such a distant past. Uh, if you've if you've identified the ones that are are most likely to be requested and digitized them and so forth, um, I would think it would be a great thing to to have them preserved somewhere. And you know, I know that there's going to be some concern about uh, how much work this is going to create for the town staff. But as you say. What it's, I would say is, once it's up, I, uh, it website. should be non non work. Yeah, no, the I mean, you're literally going to save you. Yeah, yeah. These, yes, but yeah. if you have stored records where PVMA is holding them, they're subject to the same public records. Oh, no, we, I, I, I yeah, but really I understand that. And what I'm saying is that, um, Peter, I think you're probably accurate. You're probably one of the few people in the last 50 years that has ever sought any information from those early documents. Um, now, if it happened once a year, you know, that's still 50 times. Um, so I think it makes sense to do something. I think we would probably want PBMA to keep the records all in one place, not scatter them through their no. stacks, but yeah. have- I mean, they're, these are records. in the archive rooms upstairs. Right. Correct. Yeah. With it, and so it's all in one place. It's easy mm -hmm. to figure out and- uh, and I think most are digital already. There are well, there are, some that are not. But what anybody would typically ask well, for, even doing historical research, is digital. already digitized. Right. Yeah. Right. And then the rest are inventoried. So if somebody wanted to dig further into obscurity, well, they, they'd know what was up there. Right. You could but go it, and it, do that. It's no different than what exists right now. Right. The only one, finally, Barbara said, oh, wait a minute. I have an inventory that Shirley Majewski did back in 20. 12 2013 yeah. when there was a slight move to move them out of there yeah let's get them done the historical commission did that yeah so whether they're sitting in the basement or whether they're sitting at pvma the same process it's the same process right you still come in require or ask the town clerk i want to see x and y records but we've actually gone to the extra step of posting them right so that people actually know what's there right not it's a mystery that what's in the basement well we don't know right well, now we do know we do i i do know peter that you in my time 20 years you are the only person that has looked at those records the assessors have looked at. well yeah, well there's property that we have access and we have access. Yeah, to but that. the right. assessors would have to do that anyway. It's not yeah. creating any extra work for them if they're doing their job. So, no, right. but for, but so having the inventory is going to be very helpful. But we also have to have an agreement with PBMA, which is in draft form at this point. Okay, right. Yeah. We'll and I that. had this conversation with Tim Newman. So let's yeah. get yeah. The, let's get that aware. Do. And then I think so, the plan is not to just have you know meat hooks go in there and grab this stuff. My thought talking to you was like let's, let's set some time let's set out tables down there because there is a bigger room yeah. and have somebody who knows what's there, pull them out, organize before we move anything. So uh, I would propose that in it, uh, just coming back the other way. Uh, what I would suggest, and I've talked to John about this, is give the historical commission the authority to do that. Mm -hmm. And I will work with them as, as an advisor. And great. that would be our first step would be to organize them. Um, the inventory is not just an inventory, but it's actually by shelf. Right. So we already know what's there and where it is. Yep. So what I would ask is that uh, the town provide us boxes 
archivally yeah. stable boxes that we can use in this process and it could actually keep some of the records in right. up at PVMA and maybe look out to proper transport of some vehicle that's reasonable. Boxed. Yeah. Um, if uh, if it comes down to bodies, I can probably rouse up enough muscle power to mm -hmm. put them in the trucks and unload them. Right. Um, it's going to take uh, a few weeks to um, um, clear the space upstairs. Right. Uh, for them, uh, but uh, Gene Zelensky, who's the uh, librarian there, um, is you know they're ready to do that. Okay. Um, can I, I can I ask that you try to do that before we have spring? Well, um, the the goal would be I think within the next couple of months. Right. Yeah, I uh, I, I would just worry about more moisture happening. Well, That's I think all. the you know the first thing is to is to get the boxes and get the tables set up out there because there are some of those documents that are that far off the floor. Right. right. And if we do ever get water, anything on those bottom shelves. It doesn't drain at all and it's already it, circulating. Yeah. I'd love to get that going. So yeah. what, what I would suggest too is that uh, <laughs> we do need, I agree with uh, Casey, we, we need an MOA or an MOU with uh, mm -hmm. um, PVMA uh, as to what the process is going to be. I don't think they had talked about it exactly as a relationship between the town clerk keeping her responsibilities here for and taking queries for public access. And they're really a repository and a responder to that request. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of digitization, um, they don't have the resources to digitize stuff that's not right reasonably to digitize and um i've already done it, what is reasonable. worth doing so yeah. you can have a copy and put it up on your web page and that even remo removes the the responsibility from the staff up there to do anything that isn't really necessary under the right. public records law yep um Okay. So, you know, I'd like to review the the MOA and, and just make sure everybody's talking about the same thing and and uh, and anticipation. Um first I'm gonna send it to Kim. Yeah, please. It's between the town and of course. Do that when we get it done. We'll take a look at it. Chris, you had a question? Yeah, no, just a couple of comments. Um, first of all, I'm glad we're doing this. I mean, it's kind of scary to hear this stuff sitting on a basement floor, especially when there was all sorts years. of preoccupations about frozen pipes last week. Um, my experience dealing with PBMA in this matter is because our family had a lot of historical records, right? That were left for my parents and all of my mother's descendant, uh, ancestors rather. Um, and I turned everything over to PBMA because I knew that we could never as a family protect it long term. And they did a fantastic job of documenting everything that went into their archives and producing lists. And it's a very user-friendly system up there if you request to ever have access to a piece of information or what have you in your family or a variety of historical documents. Um, so I, I think this is a perfect uh, solution, what should have been done probably long ago. Yeah, many many years ago. Um, so it sounds it sounds like um, it, what you're proposing is to continue to work on an agreement, legal agreement between the town and PBMA about being the repository for these records, and you're looking for us to give you approval to have the historical commission start to prepare documents. It makes sense to me for a number of reasons. The 1888 building is one of the buildings we're looking at renovating, yeah. and um, so those records can't stay there anyway. Right. So we have to have another alternative that is permanent rather than move them in here, move them from one room to another, yeah. get them all confused. So this is a win-win a for us as far as I'm concerned, as long as you know we uh, allow the process of the MOU, MOA, whatever we're going to call it, um, to be finalized to the satisfaction of both parties. And then we yeah. just need to check with Brenda about is there an account that we can pull, I don't know, 
couple hundred bucks from to get some boxes. I mean, we need, we need to know the type and yes, yeah, we let's find out, recommend you've done this. We'll recommend a box that yeah, we should get yeah. that's, you know, qualifies I mean, for you, this. You know, they come all collapsed and they just you know, fold yeah. down. It's a double bottom. It's got handles. It's got a cap on the top. Right. Um, you probably got them. We may have even some have some here. Boxes like, yeah, banker's boxes. Yeah. 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 So we can do that. So, and then um, we need to get some more, get some more. But um, yeah. Do you need a motion from the board? For the have the them or just consensus. I don't know. It sounds like you guys have consensus. We have consensus to have the historic Absolutely. commission do Absolutely. do the work. One of the, I mean, one of the things I will tell you too, and I mean, in terms of MOAs and MOUs, I've written a whole mess of them over the course of time. I used to teach at the National Academy, and that was one of the things that we taught how people how to do. Yeah. So. As yeah. uh, Casey says, we do have one we in have in one. form. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, if you got one in the works and yeah. and. Yeah. Um, you know, I just like to see it. And I was, I was a little bit afraid from the newspaper account that we were talking about, you know, documents in this, right. you know, town is, and that's, they, PD, PVMA is not the place to put those. No, no, we've um, got them here. They're safe here. The other thing I will tell you is there's two or three boxes in there of the earliest loose leaf records. I forgot that I even, I moved those. When you're pointing, you're pointing. I'm pointing to the town in, safe, to, yes, town in safe. in the yeah. town office. Yeah. So they're on they're on a different shelf, okay. and then there's the bound volumes, and they were really nicely done. I mean, yeah. all of the they were the the records were taken apart page by page, put in clean, put in glassine uh, leaves. Um, uh, made it a little difficult to photograph them, but uh, I, yeah. you know, I I did They're it. Protected. And I think you'll I think you'll appreciate the quality. I've given you a couple of examples yep. in the in the packets of what the page actually looks like from the old town meeting records and um do you have them on a usb or how do you oh yeah i can bring them on a memory stick that's not a problem and if you need obviously costs for the sticks I, they're not cheap so i mean i'm sure that's a large volume so let us know what you need You'd to be get surprised. that I, I i carry them around in a little memory stick all the time yeah. i mean two gigs it's amazing when you fit on two gigs. Uh, you know, and I, thing, one of those but... little things. I think it's, and they're not in a strange proprietary format. You said you put them into like a standard word. Microsoft doc document, so that as time goes on, they could progress. Uh, you know, because oh yeah, I mean, I have, what, I have... what I would recommend, they're they're, I think most of them I've actually converted to a PDF. Right, exactly. Yeah, and good. what I would do That's is create a, you know, just yeah. make sure that I I could give you both. Yeah, but one of the things, just just so we're clear, is that these aren't transcriptions, right? That you can go in and query. No, these are just understood. photographs Pictures, yes. mounted yep. in a Word doc, yep. right? Page after page after page after page. So what the person is going to be looking at is the original handwriting. Well, quantum of somebody in seventeen is coming a long way. So oh, I, you know, seventeen twelve with a yeah. quill pen. Um, yeah. it, it's, uh, I think for, uh, unfortunately for the modern generation, it's, we're going to lose historians because they can't read cursive anymore. Right. They just <laughs> don't true. teach it. That's sad. It is, sad. it is sad. And not only don't they teach cursive, but when you start adding the fact that it was written with a quill pen and there's some scripts like yees and everything else that, uh, aren't <laughs> modern. Right. Um, it, makes it difficult but anyway okay well, it looks I, like we've got a good plan going forward may, may i ask uh, an oh, MOE please. question yeah i think there should be something in the document that says that pvma will not incur any cost in doing this for the town got it okay well, i think that's something that i would want yeah. tim is probably going to say that yeah he has uh, yeah seen it we'll yet. have that negotiation yeah. for sure but, but i think ta i've I, talked to tim directly about this yeah records. I, I think we've got it covered in yep. terms of the event, if if it wasn't all if if I hadn't done the digitization, I'd be a little Maybe. less. Um, well, I'd be a little more concerned, I guess. Yeah. But the fact that, in fact, when they're you know, I mean, basically, when those documents are up at PVMA, there's no reason for anybody to have to look at the original document. Right. They could just. I could just bring it up, up on the screen. That's perfect. Or come to your web page. So I'd love, so, love a copy of those. That'd be great. And get yeah. loaded up. I can bring those in this week. That's love all. Love that. Problem. That'd be excellent. Thank you so much. Peter. Thank you. Yeah.
Okay. I really appreciate all your effort on this. Yeah. We'll get them protected eventually. Yeah? Okay. Well, <laughs> hopefully sooner Thank than you later. For persistence. But what I'd like to do is be able to, if you guys can have somebody set up some tables over there yeah. and figure out a way that John and I can get access when we need to, or. I um, want to just come up that back stair, right? I think that's been fixed and the door works there because instead of running to and around the ramp, we talked on the phone about coming out that back door. Yeah, I don't. I, if it's Obviously. open and there's a key for it or yeah. whatever, but you know, I, I talked to John. Right, we'll get in, in touch with Kevin. Uh, I talked to the chief at one point, and he said, "Well, I got a key, so I can let you in any time. Yeah. So whether you want to do it that yeah, way, yeah. that's we, fine." We, we can certainly work out a process for getting you access when you need it, and and a process for asking for access. And and yeah, yeah. so perfect. Is there any issue with air quality? Yeah. I mean, I know there was be down there for very long. Should we have masks. respirators or masks? I, I think definitely. Masks would probably be helpful. I don't go down there without masks. I've but been down there a few no times. I'm not worried about really it. I'm not either. Before, so. <laughs> I mean, I mean yeah. but I know we want to make sure that that's another reason with the pipes and stuff. You have an expert who, who does Kevin's this. You know, so just ask him what you should do when you're when you're doing this process. Yes. He probably knows much better than we do. Okay. Well, I, I went through Katrina for seven months rough when the mold was black and running down the walls yeah get a little sense of what's involved here yep good um okay. i don't i don't really have a problem I, but what i used to do is just go and get them and then i go in the room in here and do that's where i do the photographing right so just okay but they're fine thank you great for thank, to you. Take yeah. thank, thank you thank you very much peter you. have a good night move this along <laughs> yes we'll move it along Thanks thank for you your very work. much i really appreciate all your effort uh, let's see. We did have some select board announcements. Um, I just want to hit Chris, on a couple of things real quick. Oh, I was just going to say Chris is here. For I will get Chris in, in two seconds. Yeah. So I want to hit on um, things for, for um, the rec department. Sue asked me to uh, or left me a couple of notes highlighted. So I want to just remind the public that Frontier Girls Softball League registration is uh, February 13th, which is a Monday, 530 to 630 here at the town hall. This is grade second third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. There's a registration fee for second through fourth of $65. Grades fifth and sixth is $75. You can make checks payable to the town. Um, there's stuff online. You go to the rec department, get information on that. I also wanted to hit on the, um, one second here, the, uh, oh, and I lost it now. The rec department is doing the light up my heart luminary night for, um, Valentine's Day, which is February 14th at 6 p.m. So if you need luminaries, um, Sue will be here, I think, on Thursday from 4.30 to 5.30. If you still need to get bags, I think bags are luminaries, um, $10 for 10 bags and tea lights. So please do that. It's always good to see the town lit up. Um, also, Deerfield Rec Baseball for the 2023 season. Uh, T-ball, grade kindergarten and first. Um, Cost is $60, rookie grade second and some of first grade, $60 minor league, which is grades three and four, uh, $75 and grades five and six, which is the ma major league is 110. Um, school choice students would add $25 to all levels. Uh, registration is also Monday, February 13th from between 5.30 and 6.30 at the uh, Deerfield Town Hall. There's registration forms online at Deerfield ma.us slash recreation so please come and sign up your kids um that's what i have and then uh go ahead carolyn well is um here. chris is here he was going to do an update on the friends of deerfield i i did uh stan stands here so i'm going oh, to mention great. hey stan um those chairs in the corner we've got to move them out because stan's going to put the time capsule over there on the little table. Talk to Kevin. Great. Yeah. So okay. if we can work on that. Yep. And then um, after um, Chris is done, could we just skip up to the Leary lot? Because the Leary lot keeps coming up on our 350th um, where we are at. And mm -hmm. so with Chris and Peter here and Stan, it would be good to talk about the Leary lot so that they get an understanding of what's happening. Okay. Well, okay. first, the Friends of Deerfield. Okay, so I'll try to take a lead here. and I've got um, basically four major agenda items to review with you. One is going back a month ago, 
you kind of um, had consensus that the Friends of Deerfield could go canvas the businesses, restaurants mainly, and, and um, drinking establishments in the center of South Deerfield in terms of whether there would be any kind of interest and um, rallying around outside dining that would be kind of more specific to the 350th year, but could become something maybe going forward. So I wanna report on that survey results. We reached out to 15 businesses with the one page survey. Um, we received three written responses and seven verbal responses where we could gather them by kind of an interviewing process. Um, there is a fair amount of skepticism surrounding prior town denials for outside tables and chairs due to space and blockages and things like that. Um, there's questions on whether liquor licenses would also be extended to outside dining, but I'm sure that's something that would be solvable. Um, concerns over restroom access. Concern, this is a serious concern over loss of street parking that's close to some businesses. They felt like their business would be penalized versus others if we had to start taking street space for setting up tear, uh, you know, um, yep. platforms and, and table and chairs. Um, the ones that were interested said that it should be all summer long. That was that was a consensus about those interested. It's not worth doing it just for one week or even right. two or three weeks. It had to be a longer term investment. But overall, not a lot of interest. Okay. The, the feeling is that with the town's kind of deteriorated sidewalks and the plans for the South Deerfield Commons still in flux, it maybe was a concept that was premature. Sounds good. Okay. So, so the bottom line for the friends of Deerfield, all that we could do is encourage some special hours, promotions, open house type things that somebody would do different surrounding the 350th anniversary, but it's going to be up to those businesses to petition the select board for any special permits or approvals they need for anything like that. Okay. So that's the update on that. Any questions? Nope. nope. Next um, time. Yeah. So, so in terms of uh, kind of wrap up the Jubilee and um, and then any remaining major fundraising we have to cover the rest of 2023, we have wrapped up everything on the Jubilee. The last check for uh, actually $587 went in the mail today for the time capsule for the materials. And and the and the welding supplies to make the time capsule. So so we as friends of Deerfield have a pretty good line of sight in terms of what our financials are and where our cash is and where we're headed for the rest of the year. So against that backdrop, we've approved as a board three main sponsorship areas that we want to share with the town and the select board. Um, going forward and it's front loaded into the next six months not surprising um first of all is that we're willing to support uh whether it's a little bit of extra staffing for janitorial or for some av etc or some light refreshment sessions surrounding the historical series uh speaker series that are being formulated the calendar is being populated as we speak a few music events etc so we'll be a backdrop support for any of those events and i think the last i knew there was like nine speaker events anticipated and four musical events uh there could be a few more but we set aside you know in a macro level enough funds to cover some backdrop support for any of that. Um, the other thing that um, that we've been talking about with this 350th steering committee is to, is to fund and organize the fireworks, which would occur on the Saturday, September, Saturday, the 17th of June. Um, <clears throat> uh, obviously the select board is working hard with the state, with the Commonwealth in terms of getting access to the preferred venue, which is the top of Mount Sugarloaf. And there's a variety of reasons why that's the preferred venue. 
Um, and so we're confident that those, um, if you will, discussions and negotiations will go through. And we have concerns as a board of outlaying a big chunk of money for fireworks if they have to be shot at an alternative place where it ends up being mediocre in terms of a display show. So we will express that concern right now to the town that we're talking about a $20,000 display here. And um, we have to be prudent with, you know, the nonprofit funds we've raised uh, to, to make sure that's well spent on behalf of the town consistent with our mission um, alternative venues will have to be looked at closely in terms of whether they succeed in providing um, the right event for the for the town in our view for for the money. So that's that's all I'll say on that um, because I know the select board's working closely with the state on that. Um, the other thing that we um, have done preliminary planning on, scoping, preliminary budgeting, et cetera, and are willing to support uh, is kind of a finale chicken barbecue on Sunday the 18th. Uh, and let me, let me just describe, uh, I call it a chicken barbecue and family day. Let me just describe the aspects that we've looked at and that done preliminary costing and everything on that we feel confident we can support it financially and organizationally. Um, first of all, it's a chicken barbecue where we uh, would run from 12 noon to 8 p.m. Uh, we'd have live band from one to seven. Intermissions on the band and right up front and at the end would be other music that we'd play, background music. So there would, there would always be continuity. Um, we envision and working with Sue Antonellis and the Recreation Committee, uh, a series of uh, bounce houses, slip and slide, obstacle course, et cetera. This would be uh, located in the lower level of Deerfield Academy. The actual seating and eating would be inside the tennis pavilion, which is a very large structure covered so we don't have a rain issue. And obviously there's a lot of lawn area where we can set up for kids activities and outside activities. Um, and um, we've, uh, we've got a great reach out from the, the Polish club in the center of South Deerfield. They have uh, assets that are been used a lot and good success uh, in terms of roasting chickens and potatoes. We would actually do all that in South Deerfield and shuttle it quickly and appropriately to Old Deerfield rather than build new pits and try to get into new fire approvals for, for the layout and, and for any rain coverings and stuff like that. It's all been established and um, approved in the center of South Deerfield. And so the Polish Cub is, is going to work closely with us and we're very thankful for that. That's great. That was, that's a very practical solution. Um, the menu um, would span anything from, um, uh, you know, homemade baked beans and coleslaw and rolls and, and chicken. And there's ideas of cookies and uh, um, strawberry shortcake for dessert. So it would be a real barbecue and yeah. it would be quality. It would be quality food. And the way we envision it as the Friends of Deerfield, we would obviously have to administer ticket sales. They would be very affordable and kids under 10 would be free. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> and free. And so, um, so, so that's kind of the scope. I didn't want to get into too much detail, but I kind of wanted to wet people's whistle in terms of what we're talking about. Um, and then the other things that we're kind of standing by on is if we anything more special takes uh, um, takes place on Founders Day. I know it's still being defined what the activities of that day will be, but we think we have enough resources where we could get involved and help out. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is just how the Friends of Deerfield, as well as the main donors that we have, um, get to participate in the parade, but that's a work in progress also. So yep. 
that's not well defined yet. So, okay. So, but but I guess there's two things that we have requests of the select board. Um, is one is to approve the Friends of Deerfield to sponsor, organize, and contract coordinate surrounding the speaker music events, the support, backup support to that. Um, and also with regard to the fireworks, and also with regard to this concept of the finale chicken barbecue and family day. Because we're ready to run, but we think that, that the town um, has to tell us, go ahead and run so we can start making contracts and, and ironing out all the details. No, I just had a comment about the alternate space or the alternate area to shoot the fireworks off. Yeah, we're not we're um, not sure ECR yet. If the continues to tell the town no, then we have to have an alternate space. Of course, we will. Um, it is what it is, one way or the other, but we'll keep pressure on until we can. I was just going to say, I'm working on it as much as possible. All the other stuff, I'm good. Appreciate the help. Do you, do you want a motion? Do you want to make a motion that we support? Yeah. Okay. okay. I will make this motion that we support um, activities outlined by the Friends of Deerfield. Uh, with the uh, um, additional um, close coordination with the town administrator's office so that she knows what you're doing. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. I mean, the once we hit the ground running here, we've got issues around you know insurance and getting yeah. those filed and special permits for any open cash bar and we yeah. also have to coordinate with the police for coverage yeah. absolutely and all that logistics all that stuff okay sounds good so no. we have a motion and i'll second it any further discussion all those in favor tim hilchi aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye and thank you so much chris yeah thank you and so the only other uh, the only other request we brought up is regarding um, like promotion on, on the town's website. is a lot of places when you have a special event like 350th, you go to the homepage and there's some sort of icon or banner coming across or something front and center that says, hey, check this out for the latest 350th events. Yeah. And we don't, we don't really have that on the Deerfield homepage. And, and I think that would be helpful because we even realize our Friends of Deerfield website isn't highly visited either. The town's website is probably more the go-to place than anything else. Well, let us know what you need. And I think we can talk with Pat about getting stuff up there. Pat and Chris. Pat and Chris to, to get stuff up there. Yeah. Okay. 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 Very so, good. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate the help. So we have a... Um, and we will move those corn and we move those chairs, Stan. Yeah. Right. Um, and then can we just go to jump to the weary lot? Okay. Discussion because Chris and Stan and Peter are here. Well, um so they just know where because I get asked every what is meeting. the question though? I mean, I, no, I they, we just want to discuss it so that they know where we are at right now. Well, we're not, I don't know if we're anywhere at the moment because I think there's talk right. between. So there's a contract attorneys. discussion between uh, us and Berkshire Design Group, which was the group that I was to flush out this plan. To, yes. Right. Because this plan is not complete because it doesn't have the other. We, we need additional design work. So. We do. So that has to be first. We need a contract before they'll do it. Yep. Um, then we need them to work on that design, and once we get to a substantial completion of that design, well, um, we would want them to help us do construction procurement. Right. Related. Exactly. And then, how, and how the discussions going with? There's Hampshire. language. So I had that in a in a notation. Uh, there's language the Berkshire Design wanted added to the con to our general contract. But then the uh, discussion with uh, Hamshaw. Hamshaw. I haven't heard back from them. We did pass. So Tim was facilitating yeah. the contact between our lawyers and their lawyers. And we um, I have not heard back because right. that communication was being was yeah. direct. It, it takes right. Some time. So um, I actually reached out to um, Joe, I forget his last name, at MTC to find out they've exchanged um documents about you know the yep. exchange of both lots yep. um 
and he said that he would follow up. Uh, so I'll, I'll send him okay. another email tomorrow. Just ask where they stand. Okay. But I figured that we, we will probably get this done. And so we didn't need to work on the deer, you know, the, the design element. Right. And, we do. Um, yeah. You know, we, there's no reason to wait for them to sign those documents before Correct. we, we so. know what the footprint's going to be. So right. let's come up with a good design. Right. So, okay. So whatever you need for, for that. So what we'll just you need to tackle you... that later. No, I have language changes. I have to send back to um, Jeff. He had given me some um, things he wanted to address and I ran them by council because sometimes we have to be careful with engineers. And yeah. Yep. And did, or do we have a figure that they're looking for to be paid for this? About 50. It depends. And that's money. That that's what we had appropriated oh, right. in October. Yep. Okay. We good. we had voted previously yep. on yep. The, the first round of ARPA money was going to go towards getting this done. So right yep. now you have 500000 allocated to the project. I think right. once um, Jeff and his team can dig into those documents, they'll give us an updated cost. Estimate. Right. And then kind of design it out. I would love to see, you know, it, just my two cents on this plan. It's pretty, it's pretty blase, you know, like it's just square. I was hoping for a little bit more. Um, I mean, it's, I know it's not a huge space. And if you're doing maybe some sections of this, maybe we don't need 150 parking spots, you know I what I mean? I think you're going to be able to have them if well, you want to have um, If you want to have, you want to have those green space, and, okay. and I, I just feel like in some areas of this parking lot, it would be great to kind of carve out a section where maybe there isn't parking for a section and there's more green space for a couple picnic tables and I think sitting. You guys have talked well, about that more, we did the charrette. I, more of a nice I was just going to say, we had had that charrette Mm -hmm. after our first climate change forum mm -hmm. and the idea was to work with Berkshire Brew to have a bump yeah. out into the Leary lot right. that would facilitate that kind of activity right so some sort of you yeah know, so a transitional space that was so it sounds like it sounds like we've got a lot of ideas that we've talked about repeatedly and we need to set up a specific time yes when with Berkshire design to actually have a real charrette yes and decide what we're going to do you are right so that they the can design yeah. it yeah, I, you were right on the money. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I am. I think need everybody to talk to businesses. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Let's, let's pull them all in. Well, no, you guys yep. need to have right. an outreach let's meeting. Let's do it. Um, that was one of the reasons when I, I sent a, an email to Chris earlier saying how much how much ARPA fun, funds do we really have? Right. And on the Leary lot, we do need to set up a meeting that includes the businesses so yep. that they can get feedback, tell us what their needs are. Right. I mean, we own the space, well, but it's going to service them. Yes, I yeah. want to make sure that we actually write into the contract that they are going to work with Berkshire Brew on this. So there is a transitional area. That's not between Berkshire Design and Berkshire Brewing Company. Right. No, but no. that's what I want in the contract is the outreach to Berkshire Brew. Okay. Why? We're going to outreach. If we're going to outreach to all the businesses, why would yeah. we call one we business just out? Just Berkshire Brew. Yeah. You know, they need to, they need to get They are all. very interested yeah. in having that interested. connection. I know. Yeah. They've, well, they I just want to make sure that we get enough outreach that yeah, you that know, has that to be, be led. Right. There it is. You guys, you guys have to lead the charge. Reflective yeah. of the outreach and yeah. like, like nothing. BBC is in a unique position in that they own land that it, that abuts the property. Right. So what they do on their own land, uh, they they certainly want to coordinate with what we're going right. to do exactly. on our land. Yep. And uh, you know we're going to reach out to all the businesses. So yep. um, we need to have a formal process and, and you know set it up in the next month or so so that yes. we can actually move forward on this. Down, because this parking lot's not going to be ready for the 350th. I can tell you. No, it's not. No, but <laughs> at least we can mow it. <laughs> can we agree to mow it or something? Well, that, we can. I can talk to Kevin about that. Yeah. But the the important thing with the businesses is after hearing Chris's experience and after experiencing what we what happened with the tree boxes when there was a lot of pushback from the businesses you have several owners that abut the one side of that property um the board needs to start those discussions because Jeff's going to need that information right. too. And one of my first meetings with those businesses when I became a select board, they said if you develop this area, we might develop the back sides of our buildings right. because you've got parking and stuff there right. now. If so they have some parking opportunities. It's going to help Tim's them. right on the so money. Let's get a meeting together. Let's get an outreach meeting, a charrette kind of thing together and have Berks your part of it and let's get everybody's yeah, ideas on Jeff that. And need to do that. I think it can be a really cool space. Yep. 
That's Jeff what we got. Design. Good. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, it's fine. It's just that right. they were supposed BBG. to incorporate that Tourette information and they never did. And that's Who? Uh, Titan Bond? Yeah. 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 And I, I agree with that. So, so I, I don't know where the documentation is. So I remember seeing the pictures, though. It was part, it was part of our um, the climate change form. Right. So Chris Curtis would have that information. Okay. We've got a massive agenda and yeah, I don't want to be here till midnight. So we're probably not taking any more public comment at the moment unless you have something really quick. It had to do with a Larry one. I don't think it matters. The question to the 350 committee is not all of what you talked about. Will that lot be available to hold a day, a day log event, a two day event? For sure. Uh, in May, know. June, or July? Probably. Probably, so but we don't do know. Construction, are you going to do anything that would disrupt the temporary use of that lot? For a day event, we're we don't know. generally not that fast, so I doubt it. We we probably have to we have to so fill you in a little later. That's really the question. Because is that where you're thinking of doing a chicken barbecue? No, you're. No, so no, what are we talking about? The tractor uh, parade. Yeah, people could park their tractors there. Got it. So yeah, we might have an antique car show. And people could park their antique cars there. We'll have to yeah. figure that so out I a little bit closer. Yeah. Or Kevin. Yeah. I would suggest, Peter, that you coordinate you you come up with Questions a little, and a dates. little actually just a little description of what you anticipate you might use the thing for, and then coordinate with DPW, town administrative office, the police department, and 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 she'll keep the select board informed and they'll they'll tell you what you need to do vis-a-vis -vis using the space. The DPW might have to mow it. They might have to grade it. I don't even know. Right. I've never walked the property. To yeah. That. Well, that's fine. But the question, the reason I asked the question is we would not even proceed to do any of that. If you said, well, it's liable to be in two big dirt piles, you know, we're going to have to pavement uh, equipment moved in there or whatever. I don't right. think we could answer that today. No. We just can't. But I, I, don't I think doubt it will, with I how fast it. everything moves. And since I've been here, it just it's molasses. It's so hard and not enough staff. It's right. Um, so. I would just give everybody the caveat that we're exploring EV chargers. And if Eversource is going to do infrastructure installation, mm -hmm. they we won't know until right. You know, because yeah. we've already put a grant through, yep, a grant application through to deal with that. So we don't know either. Yeah. But my my suspicion is that in June that thing could be mowed yeah. and that's all the work that would be done there. Cause I, you know, we don't have signed documents on, on right. the exchange. The exchange has to go through town meeting. Um, yeah. So we can't do anything before the beginning of May. And we have um, permission to do the exchange. We are, we voted. Yeah, we already, already do that. Already yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Perfect. That was a special yeah. town meeting. Right. That was yeah. special. Yeah. Okay. So skip that. <laughs> we got the rest of the parades and everything. Else. I think you're, Pretty but good safe. Is, we use it for founders? I think you're pretty safe. The answer is yes. Well, founders, we it's founders Day, May. 7th of May. 7th yeah. of May. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we're good. Okay. Thank yep. you. We don't move that fast, unfortunately. And All right. One, one other thing we've been challenged. How did you feel that the challenge to a softball game in <laughs> August by the town of Goldfield? These are fighting words. Well, <laughs> Do the <clears throat> okay. That was person. Sounds all good. At so, <laughs> if, as long as it's, it's a public venue here, if Tim. anybody can round up a softball team to challenge Northfield in a ball game in August, go for it. All right. Let me know when I will contact Northfield and tell them. Where Sounds I'm good. Going. Now I'm going to put the hammer down because I've got a we massive agenda and I don't want to be here all night. So. Um, do you really need to open the annual town meeting this early? Yes. Okay. We have to close it a month before town meeting. Can I have a motion to open annual town meeting? I will make Warrant. that motion. Any discussion? Um, are we going to have another one to set a closing date? Because I, I don't agree with this closing date, but. I don't ever remember closing it a month before an annual town meeting. Close the warrant on March 8th. The requirement in the bylaws, it has to be closed. It doesn't say that the language that. has to be finalized, but it does have to be closed. We've opened it. So you can that. push that. Yeah, right. Um, okay. I just usually give sort of a range. Let's just open it at the moment. And you would want to close it 
to comply with the bylaw, you would want to close it by the, the 23rd. Yeah. The That's the closest meeting. Yeah. Well, let's not close it yet. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. So I'll second. Okay. Okay, we have a second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. Um, oh, did I hit on everything here? No, I haven't, right? I started to just go down that list. Um, is there any Board of Health agent discussion at the moment? Um, I just I just wanted today. to say um, uh, the Homeland Security meeting on Tuesday, there's just good news. It's less flu, less COVID all up and down the valley on the Berkshires. And that, Great. And that I just want to announce that um, once May hits, uh, the emergency for COVID is going to expire. So um, that means that if you want to get a COVID shot, it's going to cost you 150 bucks. So every Tuesday, the third Tuesday, excuse me, not every Tuesday, the third Tuesday in every month um, is down at Northampton uh, Council Chambers. There's free COVID. They have all the different varieties of COVID as well as the bivalent and flu shots if you want to go down there. And it's 1230 to 430, the third Tuesday of every month in the council chambers at North Northampton. And is this going to be posted in the Board of Health area on the website? It's on the website. You Good. can do a sign up. They will take walk-ins. So if you're just down there shopping, you can walk in. But okay. if you want an appointment, you should sign up on our webpage. I sent it, the announcement to... Chris, so if you are not current, this is how you can get current. Perfect. But, and if you're a kid, if you have kiddos, they have all the different varieties of shots. How so, long do you need to, before your last COVID? Can you go? Well, a couple months. Uh, no, the, the bi, if you've had the bivalent, if you've had the bivalent since September, the, they were available this past September. Um, you're current. They're they're supposed what to if you have it so from september on yeah you're, if you, you haven't had if you haven't had another a booster since september or one of the that came out the bivalent that's come yeah, out i think i just missed that then you can go down and get one okay it's free sounds good great uh there's an open space uh and rec plan support letter in our packet um i read that it looks fine to me. I think and there may be a copy in the signature file, but it not there is. Me. Yeah, no, I think there is. I make a motion we send the open space and recreation plan support letter. And thanks to planning board for helping us group that. Yeah. For helping group I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, Sewer abatements is next. Um, I'm just going to run through this list and then I can get with you or Sarah and work out the, the stuff. Um, see if I have these all in order. I think I had them in order last time. Let me just do this. This meeting. So there was a request from the property, uh, 28 Conway Street, Conrad Belinsky. There is no abatement. This was um, minimal use. That's all it did. There was no minimum. There was no usage in the building, um, and all they're paying is the minimum usage charge and a sewer hookup. So there is no usage. It's just having a house has that charge. So there really is no abatement allowed for that. Um, the next one is for. Uh, Pauline Kudzba at 64 Grave Street. And this one, um, they had a problem with the uh, water meter and the water department came and fixed it. So um, I was hoping to recommend to you all that we would, um, th their usage is usually minimal. There's nothing, you know, they usually don't pay anything more than minimal usage. And the last two bills, they were were charged. We we don't have the ability to go back previous years to do abatements. Had we known, we would have probably done that too. But the only thing we could do is bring this to a minimum usage bill. So there would be an abatement of um, uh, $132.74. I can get you all this stuff, Casey, too. And that would bring that to a minimum usage and the connection fee. That's the most we could do. And I think that would be fair to do that for her. For that resident. That's because Deba, right? Yeah, because Deba. Yep. Yep. 
we wish we could go back, but we just can't. Yeah, you can't back. Unfortunately, but I'm glad she caught it and she won't have that issue any further. So we'll take care of this year's. Um, there was one uh, at 72 North Main Street for Eric and Elizabeth Brown. We looked at the um, the usage. We we don't do abatements for filling swimming pools. Generally, you houses just get, you know, you only pay 125% of your winter usage bill. They they did not even use enough to reach that amount. I think they would have had to reach 41,210 thousand gallons they they only use 35,720 gallons which is really in line with with their normal usage it's it's about half of what they used in 2021 um because they used about 75,000 gallons that year um so there isn't there isn't an, a mechanism to to give an abatement on that one so that one is denied there was one other this was for uh Deborah Sukolowski this was a um a request to make her house a single family owner occupied and, and then qualify for the 125% winter usage um, uh, policy, but but the house is not um, assessed as a single family. It's assessed as a two family. We have no mechanism to go and just, you know, I, I know that they're not using the property as a two family right now. So they're not gaining the income from that second apartment, but we don't have the ability to just change and decide who's going to have a single family and who's not going to have a single family. We have no idea how many people are in there or when, if they would like to and would recommend if they're not going to use it as a two family, if they pull the stove and then come to the assessor's office and have the place assessed as a single family house, the next bill, we would definitely, um, you know, it, it would qualify. But other than that, we have no mechanism to be able to just decide that one's going to be a single family now and then later back to a two family it's assessed as a two family and that's just kind of how that works i don't i wish i had a better answer for that mm. any thoughts on so that? there's no so there's no abatement there and, is no um, abatement no abatement i don't have a mechanism to do yeah, that abatement. No abatement for multi -family. And if 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 they wanted to pursue turning this back into a single family home they'd probably have to meet with the building department and the assessors to determine what they need to do to make the house a single family again right yeah exactly and then it would qualify for the for the program um you know i, I understand that there was you know um in speaking with them that I, I think the um they had irrigation put in so obviously the usage went way up compared to what they normally used um twice general a little more than twice of what they normally use but we don't have a way to fix that um i don't for a two family, right? we have to be fair to everybody and if it's a two family it says right in the page of the bill that we can't do it if it's not you know if it's it's only for single owner occupied homes so i would recommend if you're not going to use it to change it to a single occupied home okay. so that's what i have for sewer abatements at the moment okay. um and i can get with you on any of the numbers you need so okay. to get that squared away um um the next item is um uh dpc uh amendment to the south deerfield wastewater treatment engineering services agreement for phase two so because our project is going to be extended for seven and a half months there's um, on-site uh, oversight and job site management of that project so there's a fee for that and you know that's a choice for us if we want to continue with what we have going on the the deep, deep uh, the wastewater treatment chief would really love to continue the work they're doing he's very grateful for having rich on site um dpc is there every day working in conjunction with um the contractors and our uh, our staff to make sure the project's going along it's it's actually right about when we get the next change order we're now going to be fifty thousand dollars less so we're we're going in the right direction at at That's almost 92 percent of the project in we are less fifty thousand on the job which is why you want construction yes management. they've been great <laughs> on oversight um the uh that doesn't take into account the th about three million that we or four million dollars we did in change order seven 
But if you just look at the project as a whole and what we did, we are under that. And I think that by the time we're done with these other phases, our contingency will be in good shape too. There is discussion going on about sewer and doing these other phases. And we'd like to tackle that extra bit we had talked about. Um, we held off on that North tank. We have a plan to do that and to use up the contingency, the grant money. Like we wanna use everything we had to get all the stuff done, get the roof on the main, the building that we haven't touched, that's leaking, the tiles are down. So we'd like to get the stone off of there and do a regular, regular roof on it. So trying to use up all that grant money and all the money that we've appropriated for it. But I'll bring all that back to everybody to talk about. This is really just about the um, the contract for oversight, which is $185,120.46, which is, you know, it's in it's in our budget that we planned on. But um, again, I'll make a can you, um, before Please. we do that, yep. um, I just want to ask, um, the 7.5 month projected extension, yes. is that because of like equipment not arriving, like electrical panels? No, or no, it's, it's doing that phases. next phase. It's so that it's, the, change it's the 3 million? Exactly. Okay, good. Yep. So I was yep. just, that was why I was asking because um, yep. if this is going to encompass the the three million that we approved, yes, then that, it, it does. Yeah. It does. It, it it's it's taking over that aspect of it because um, we are you know we are just side note here, but we are still waiting on electrical. What we're going to do is get the the like if you go in there, you'll see a massive electrical box, one section that runs everything is the one that's taking two years to get right now. And it's been a nightmare. It's same issue all across the country, but we're looking at ways that we could, um, there are some mechanisms of those switches that we will never use, but come on this item. And we're looking at ways, can we, can we use something different that will be everything that we all need so it might be something that we can move this along faster, get it completed quicker. But right now they're telling us April or something to get the part. And it should have been here months mm -hmm. ago. But it's within the 7.5 months, hopefully. Yes. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's in that. Thank God we're extending everything because they're not just waiting around for this item. They're doing the other work. But um, yes, that's absolutely right. So and I'll bring back the other discussions after we get a full thing on, on the, mm -hmm. the, the North tank. Great. So. We have a motion and a second. I'll second, yep. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. Um, I know that is somewhere. It's not there. Did you have it in here? <laughs> print it, I'll go print it. Yeah, Which we might, might have to print it. Okay, so we can come back and sign that. Um, the next item is... The community uh, memorandum of understanding for Greenfield uh, Regional CNP for approval. This is, do you know about this? This is the, um, this is, the, oh, I'm sorry, I have it, Casey. It was stuck to this one. So this one is a memorandum of understanding, thank you, between the town of Green, city of Greenfield, who is the fiduciary, I think, on this, and it's through the towns of um, Montague, Orange, Irving, Waitley, and Deerfield, and this has to do with the... Um, this has to do with the neighborhood plan. Neighborhood plan, yeah. yes, and this th and this is the uh, Greenfield Region com uh, Complete Neighborhood Working Plan. Um, this, is, this is towards our campus. Correct. And yep. we're hoping that this will address some of the layout, like yes. the parking... Now, how how do you flow? You know, we just don't want random parking lots. Correct. We want parking to be broken up. Yep. And strategic. Strategic, and and to leverage as much as possible in a central space. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. This is uh, exactly all of that. The duration is up to twelve months. It's a work plan for community capacity building, readiness for investment, conduct community outreach to develop a vision and master plan for the campus conduct existing conditions analysis, including site constraints and zoning analysis to understand uh, development potential, prepare preliminary concept, concept scenarios to guide future development, master planning to improve connectivity with nearby Waitley Park and Ride. What, what this is, is that we're, you know, um, 
because of senior housing, we're, we're delineating the, you know, the wetlands and, yep. you know, all the site. So then what you're going to do is, is when you have uh, visioning, this is going to pay for that. Yeah. To have someone vision, well, what if you put senior housing off the church? What if you put it over here behind the town hall? What does it know, look like? What does it look like? Where are you going to put parking? You know, where are you going to put, you know, people to be able to walk? Right. You know, a little walking path kind of thing. And this grant also supports RDI and Elm Circle property owner and affordability preservation. So it's a That's separate capital. extra money. It's an extra that one. we got yep. that will facilitate the renewal of that. Um, yep subsidized housing so that we can have a little bit of a percentage in town. I mean, so we're not like at a zero. Yep. Carolyn, can I ask a question about um, sure. this visioning that you just mentioned about senior housing? Um, is that duplicating what um, senior housing was going to ask for CPC funds on, or do we not no, have to this ask? Is, we're, we're, we've finished the market phase, phase, uh, feasibility study. Now we're doing the site feasibility study. Right. And, and that money is what we're asking for CPC to do is the final engineering on the, and this is a complementary on top of once, once all the utilities are laid out, once all the, you know, delineations and everything is, so your, your site is limited. So you know where you can put your stuff. This, this is, will come in and then pay for someone to coordinate like a charrette kind of thing. Where do you want this stuff? This is where you could put this. This is what it's going to look like. This is where you could put. Um, Would you, you end know, up with some sort of plan that you can look at? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's, 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 it's to complement the information that we're getting for the site feasibility. This will be the more the visioning concept. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like final design or anything, but right. this is just to give you pictures of the place mm -hmm. of how it would be if mm -hmm. we put it here. And it would also hopefully take into account the library expansion and how that's going to impact the site, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So looking at this, there was some work by the town on this, and I worried a little bit about the capacity of well, staff it, to do uh, some of these, Denise, but I think it's setting up. Denise, Denise, uh, Mason, Lily, Dwight, and myself had committed to be the, um, you know, the facilitator. We we you have to go to meetings. Yes, that's what it and, kind of said so here. Yep. Casey is off the hook. Thank you. <laughs> You're trying to look we, out we, for Casey. When we got that grant, we said that we, you know, all of us would make sure that it got covered because not Lily can't go to every meeting. I can't go to every right. meeting. So, and Denise agreed to fill in for where she could. Where she could. Okay. Um, so, I'd entertain a motion to have the chair sign. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. It says by and then name and ITS. Do you know where to sign? I don't know. Maybe we'll wait and do that together. Here, let's, let's do that together. Yeah. Thank <laughs> Thanks. You. Just want to make sure I sign in the right spot. Um, okay, so that's done. Thank you. And then we have budgets, but I'm going to hold on that a second. Um, use of the ARPA funds for grant writing, thirty to fifty thousand. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I'd like to have Casey give us her thoughts on that. Thoughts. So generally, when you have one-time funding. Um, it isn't recommended to hire people through a one-time funding source. Um, and un knowing that the planning board has asked for a planner, um, I think you could combine planning activities with grant writing because often planners do that grant writing as well and put it within the levy. So it's actually as part of your budgets, so you'll see this on the select board staff salaries budget. Um, you could do it, you could do grant writing like this, but the reason you pull it into the levy, if you think you're gonna have a long-term grant, um, pursue it, if you're pursuing long-term grants, pursuing grants long-term, sorry. Um, you wanna have that availability within the levy because then your your one-time funds don't have a, a bigger impact later. So my thought on this though is that 
budgets are going to be very tight. My fear is that we're going to get it cut out. Um, and we heard in Boston that you can use your ARPA funds for grant writing. And I wanted to be able to use some of our ARPA funds to get a hold of some of that federal and state grant money. That's not going to happen like this, though. Understood. Yeah. So you only my have it was like 24, like having this grant writing capability out of the ARPA funds, you know, we would then just focus on, you know, if we didn't have the ability to get this person in the levy, because it's so tight. Um, could we use I just didn't want to give up on the ability to use the ARPA funds for grant writing, if we could get a hold of some of this federal money, and we go through the budget process and realize we can't afford it in our levy. I mean, I guess we could then come back to it. Then I would suggest doing it as a vendor, not a hire. Correct. Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I want to second to what, what Trevor, this is like a fallback. So yeah. now that you've outlined the plan where you're going to actually ask for planning and yeah, right. grant writing in, which in I a support. budget, yeah. which would then mean we wouldn't have to ask this question next year, which would be great. And Annalie's listening, so. Yeah. Um, but. She's smiling. In the interim, we're gonna we're gonna meet with uh, Jim McGovern on Valentine's Day, and he's gonna give us a sweetheart deal. Very nice. Um, <laughs> and we may need to write grants, so we could immediately access ten or twenty or twenty five thousand right. dollars to write specific grants that would help us move the campus forward. Um, you know, and maybe we'd never use any of this money because right. everybody in town sees the wisdom of having a planner grant writer. And they put it in the budget. Yeah. We still have to get that through town meeting. Exactly, so, yeah. so if you wanted to do a vendor contract, you yeah, vendor contractor, you know, specific to okay, we have three three grants that are specific to renovating the town municipal building, and mm -hmm. so we're going to apply for a municipal building grant. We're going to apply for you know some other grant, and so we end up with three grants that we really need to apply for within a specified period. This would give us the op ability to yeah. do it. And if we don't use the money, it go we spend it on hard infrastructure. Well, right now we also have a grant writer that Denise and I have been working with on a right. couple of grants, and we we've been successful. Right. Um. So that's been a vendor contract. Yeah. yeah. And budget. that's kind of how I vision yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. let's work on the budget and see how we can do the planner doing it right doing con concurrently. And will we help have us this idea. as the backup, I, yep. which yeah. I kind of think. I, I think we have consensus on, on this as a backup. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. And and certainly Alice Rich has been worth her money. I mean, yep. she's certainly gotten grants. Has she it. administered a grant yet? No, no, no. She okay. just writes them. I just, yeah. Wondering who's administering them. Cause I don't want to hear that complaint. To yes. Well, that's the other part where it's important that's, to, have, yeah, I know, you know, have people administer. Cause that's the biggest, but also that's not, big you're part. not going to get that for 30 or $50,000. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's when you administer a grant, is it at least it's almost half again, what you cost yeah well hopefully if we get a large enough grant we're going to be able to hire an opm to to deal with that right. grant money right um right. so right. that would be the administration piece but yep. okay okay we've already talked about the lot um adoption of a policy uh barring town employees to boards and committees and i Do think this was we don't have anything to look at here i think it was tim wanted or to talk about everybody it. wanted to talk about it as a discussion and a first yeah. Well, we didn't even have a first read because we have nothing to read yet, but it was just an initial discussion. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I guess, about it. I guess it, you know, I wasn't, I wanted basically just discuss the idea of it's appointing people, appointing right. full-time employees and right. my reasoning for regulatory, any board, um, but we can certainly discuss that. And that's, this is a discussion starting point. Correct. My idea is that, look, uh, you know, say you appoint, um, I don't know, uh, me let me tell you why yeah. because the bylaws actually require certain uh positions to participate in certain committees right so there are some distinctions you're probably going to have to right talk about. This, this is this is like your administrative Resident, right your administrative role specifies that you exactly. have to be part of this exactly. i'm talking about so so you've got a dpw guy you appoint him to a committee um and then something happens uh that involves you know, you you open the DPW up to to you know having a public fiasco because something goes wrong, um, and or uh, a police officer uh, or a firefighter, um, and their role in their role as a as a firefighter or committee member, something goes wrong, and it it you know particularly in the case of police, 
it opens them up to, you know, having stuff go from a personal individual thing to tarring the police department. And um, it also raises questions of people feeling comfortable working with folks on boards. Uh, it, it's one of the reasons why we're starting, you know, with this D, DEI um, human rights thing. It doesn't mean that these these departments can't have a role or that people who work for the police department or for the fire department or for any other paid position can't run for an office because that's covered in state law. But it does, um, you know, I think it protects these departments uh, from having their voluntary duties spilling over into their professional duties. Well, we should, I, I'm, uh, I'm not 100% sold on that, but I, I'm willing to learn and listen. So I think my concern is that, you know, we may have Kevin or John on a on a town building advisory committee because they're knowledgeable in our buildings and right. what's needed and sure. that kind of thing. So maybe they're, we're talking um, ex officio, yeah, that's, versus, that's, a, that's versus regulatory right. or ex you know, officio meaning non voting. Yeah, yeah. non voting, right. but but have they, their they're there to exactly. exactly. So, for instance, uh, many of our police officers, a couple of our police officers I know have specific training around. You know, dealing with crisis intervention and so forth. So right. they would be a natural, a natural resource for a committee that deals yes. with issues. Right. Whereas uh, if they're a voting member, and I don't know what possibility could come up, but the fact of them voting on something and having it blow up in the town's face is is what I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I can see that there's concern. I think, and <clears throat> I think it's in my mind, it's regulatory boards. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's clear cut to me, regulatory boards, whereas other boards, your ad hoc boards, your different committees that are dealing with issues. CBC is a permanent board. Town building advisory, you guys It's a permanent, approve. but not regulatory. Though, it's right? not no, regulatory. it's not, but so you got to make that distinction. Right. What's adjudicatory? Yeah, and maybe, maybe what we need to do is define which boards we're concerned about. Correct. And, you know, which is, which is a good discussion to have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so and, too. You know, because it's, it's really, it, it protects the individuals and it protects the departments that they work for. And um, as I say, the, the Massachusetts state law specifies what town employees can do vis-a-vis -vis running for public offices. <laughs> clearly defined in law and i think that's great so if somebody has the bug to serve yeah you know run for an office that you know if the if the voters want you to do it great the voters yeah. have decided if the voters don't want you to do it they're going to say no right um but appointing we, we could start with a specific number of boards and i, yeah. I agree with carolyn regulatory boards in particular are important right. um but I just wanted to get the discussion no, started good. and find out what what sort of we did have this discussion a couple of years ago yeah. and then we should or a year or so ago we should and i'm yeah. glad you brought it up again we should really have a discussion when we don't have appointments hanging over us right we can have time to think about it right and um and like you said decide what boards are important yeah so what do we need to do do we need to just i mean let two more minutes on this and we'll stop um do we need to write up a list of suggested do we all want to send something to Casey some and say, Casey? okay, mm -hmm. these boards are ones that are of concern initially? Right. I, I think Casey can just put out to STAM, her STAM group, what people have um, it would be good for to see procedures. What are doing. And because this is this was a whole MMA it was. webinar. It, it was. was. It and, was. And, and that was why, you know, I, I brought it up mm -hmm. when before we were appointing. I don't know, not last year, but the year before. I think. The suggestion yeah. I got was to have an appointment policy. Right, right. Um, That's more or less. That was the suggested. suggestion through yeah. Stan. Right. Yeah. And, and I just don't know. I can't remember had, off the top of my remember, head. Who has I can't one. I know, I'd have to go through old notes, but somewhere there, if you put it out, somebody has. MMA will have something. Yeah. MMA like, probably has one too. Because they had that webinar. So there was like, three towns that they yep. had people talk about. talk about yeah so no, i think it's worth doing okay. and worth talking about so, let's do that. so we just get we just get a uh i think i even we even had policy um templates we might. Other i don't know if we yeah. have templates i know we talked about it though yeah okay. but, but they had policy yeah well. so yeah maybe maybe chris 
can get back to us after talking with Casey or something. Yep. Yeah. That sounds good. So thanks for starting the conversation on that. Um, Franklin County Municipal Aggregation. Um, and this then there's just... also planning requests for proposals. So there's one that's the, is uh, the aggregation. I saw a letter about the electrical municipal aggregation for electricity. So there's two things here. Right. There's the fact that our aggregation contract with Dynamg expires in Next. 2024. It's, right. I want to say it's early 2024, but right. don't quote me. So the request in that email is, uh, we need to start looking at the RFP yep. process. Yep. And I wanted the board to tell me if any of you want to be involved in it. They have a meeting next week on the 14th at three to start that conversation because the RFP process is going to be at least six months. Right. I thought they all did. Whoever did it last time did a great job. Colonial did it. In. Colonial and, um, did it. I would let, you know, I know they're looking at rates and, you know, it's right. been way up and now it's kind of coming back down. They're wondering, will it stay there? So a good time to put That's why the they want to do the RFP. Yeah. So, so I think basically they want us to participate good. in the conversation. Yeah. So I it's told great. Denise Allard that I could do, I think she said the 14th. So I it's could do that. Great. Uh, if you can do that and just give us an update. Yeah. I think it was a great program and it worked very, very well. I, I actually went to um, the MMA uh, program on this oh, and um, Colonial Power was there and, and so I did speak with them he said yeah I'm your representative gave me his card and yep. um, said it's good to have a window to study the rates and out uh, probably a year out from when your contract's gonna elapse and I don't know if we were tied into what other towns did or if yes. they just opted in and I'm not sure if it's better to have larger aggregation group yeah. or smaller probably it's easier for the aggregator to if he has more people it involved yeah it was so, a yeah. large group of towns got together and um you could opt into it and then a residence could opt out if they want if but they, they want automatically it. opted in yeah. and um that yeah was, so it was seeing, a great it's kept my power pretty my power there's pretty. significant savings yeah. by doing that so glad right we did it when we did it yeah now that um, was pretty smart yeah pretty, pretty Fortuitous, yeah. yeah. Nine point something is a great kilowatt hour rate at this point. Absolutely. Um, so, are are we thinking that? I guess they reached out to all the communities. They yeah. did. So, they did. a few that want to join, apparently, too. Well, yeah. And there may be, like you said, there may be a few that want to join this because they've seen that it's been positive. Yeah. Um, but the communities that are already involved in the municipal aggregation we need to consider if we're going to stay and yeah. what we want to, how we want to participate in the RFP, because yeah. what they're going to do is they're going to run that language past us yeah, um, and really good. give us a framework to how it's going to proceed, especially in a timeline. Yeah. That's what that first meeting's for. I think that's great. I'd love yeah. to continue it. So if well, my visit. power is a good price. So yeah. I'm in Wheatley and we yeah. have the same aggregation program. Oh, good. Yes. Good, good. Excellent. No, it is. So do we Excellent. need to do anything other than tell them we're watching? No, I no. just, I yeah. was, I'm just going to the update. meeting. I just wondered if any of you wanted to participate as well. But then you also have planning requests for proposal. Is that? It's just, it was, it was that request to participate. Oh, okay. Because the RFP they're going to do, they want representatives from each of the towns to go to this initial planning meeting. Okay. Which is next week. You didn't get that email. They just sent a scheduling um, appointment out to me today. That's how I found out the meetings next week. Um, and I think it's going to be remote. So I'll probably join it remotely. Okay. And then we'll, I'll have a better idea in terms of how they want to proceed, how colonial is going to plan to proceed. I just wanted you to know that it's out there. Mm -hmm. and find out if any of you wanted to participate as well. Okay, sounds good. Um, so then the um, uh, the next item was status of solar installation above the former landfill delays. Yes, we had, we've had several. Yes. Um, I read so the most recent one, first there was a question about the the deed, the landfill deed. Yeah. And what I did was I basically connected Lisa and their count next amps council to talk about it. And I, I haven't heard anything else. So Lisa would have told me if there was a problem in this case, though, they've been asking us about whether they actually have to file a site plan application. And although they do, they do. They do. Um, and we've told them this more than once. Yeah. Um, 
but no special permit. No, well, no special permit, but we actually have to do a co-application. So we have to work with them because we own the land. Okay. Um, Annalie's listening. I'm probably going to ask the planning board to uh, waive the fees. Right. <laughs> but they, and we've discussed this with the DEP. DEP is aware of what the general plan has been. Um, they do have some drawings and they are going to have to come in and, and do a preliminary meeting, but we do believe they have to file site plan. And we know that there's a wetlands connection there too, but they're aware of that. And okay. DEP is going to monitor monitor this very closely. Mm -hmm. And so would this be something that would be moved along more rapidly if we ask them to come in for a meeting to discuss their plans for moving forward? Um, because it seems like... Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, have, they, they were waiting on Eversource forever, right? They, they waited still? for Eversource for almost a year and a half that yeah, I'm aware of. Right. Yeah. That, I, I knew that was a big yeah. deal. But it would be worth having them come in. I mean, if they're interested in coming in and just giving us an update of where they're at, what they see on the horizon, any other thing. I, I saw council's uh, decision on the site plan and that. Right. And I And I didn't publish that. I wanted yep. you guys to be able to read it. Yep. But I will send Henry that opinion tomorrow. Okay. Great. Um, if you'd like me to invite him to a meeting, yeah. If he, if he has uh, time, I can do that. Be, yeah, and, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Tim wasn't here when that all started. So yeah, to get him in the loop too. And there was something that I, I somebody mentioned to be something about a deed, but I think you clarified that. That's... Yeah, that was the deed question because their attorneys didn't like the language of the deed, and okay. Lisa came back and said it's perfectly appropriate okay um yeah. the only other thing i could think of is and there was a point where lisa and i talked about getting beth greenblatt greenblatt back involved she's the one that helped facilitate this as a consultant this mm -hmm. is her this is her wheelhouse yeah. um and if there's other issues we need to deal with um lisa and i are going to do there's that. no more grant money for that right we used up all our grant money we did we actually have it in contracted services we have a small amount right now in case we needed help with her Okay. Help from her with. Okay. It right. might be worth. Might be worth it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So, last item is the um, FY24 budgets. There's a few in our packet. with select yep. board staff salaries. Those were the three that we discussed, and then uh, I told you I'd come expense. back on to you with them. Yeah. So legal, you've got it. Ninety six. And so here's legal. The increase we didn't see an increase for our retainage costs with MTC. Right. Um, really, the increase is around um, litigation costs. And Brenda and I talked about it. Look at the first line. I know. I so know. litigation you planning, et cetera. That. Yeah. Um, it is our it estimate is, is about twenty five thousand. Yep. We can't guarantee it, but it's a guess. I know. Have we had any update? I mean, I haven't heard anything about C no road for a while. We have I there's some uh information that we have to provide. Council's asked me to provide, but it involves more than one office. So I've had to yeah. talk to other so, offices about it. I mean since the state the state going, intervened and I want to say it was Eversource, but don't call no, yeah. me. Well, yeah. there were two interventions. Yeah. So so the all that did is just drag out the stuff. Right. The fall, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yep. there's nothing really happening. So we don't know what it's going to cost to go through some of these. That's why we increased okay. the litigation. So, think, planning. Um, so entertain a motion to approve 96000 for legal for FY24. Uh, I'll second that because I guess we don't really have a choice. No. And it's probably not even any, accurate. Any further discussion? It's probably not accurate, but when you get busy, that's what it is. So. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, the other item was um, staff salaries. So this is where that conversation about a planner comes from. I know. From. You've got like just about 64000 for the planner in here. Um, it's, you know, it's a 30% increase over last year, which mm -hmm. is already a large increase i'm not so sure we're going to be able to pull that off but i'm fine approving it for now and taking it through the process and having this discussion and fight planning board is interested in getting a planner in here i think yep. if we somebody needs to add the elements the of grant writing <laughs> i mean we tr we've been working with vendors on this yeah. we still have work we're going to have to do 
um, well, with the COG and we're working with PVPC on specific technical assistance. Right. Um, planning board asked, uh, planning board asked, but it came through Annalee um, to put this forward and see what happens. Okay. If something has to be cut, something yeah. has to be cut. Right. We know that. Yep. Well, it's worth the fight. So but it's worth the conversation. It. Because like I said, and I don't know if I told you the, you guys this earlier or not, but one reason that that's in select board staff salaries is because these activities coincide. You've no, got no. Yeah. the select board has a lot of grant interest and yet there's planning aspects that we need to coordinate. Plus, frankly, we do that stuff together now anyway. Yep. And another thing too is that uh, I think Anybody who's going to be qualified to be a planner is going to have specific training in, you know, municipal planning, and it, it can help the planning board in zoning and in bylaws, et cetera. And also we have issues of, you know, are we going to have accessory dwelling units? Right. Are we going to have, you know, uh, special zones for de density uh, development, et cetera. So um, rather than having volunteers trying to, figure out what they should do. Uh, and I think there's a growing recognition on many of the boards that deal with the finance committee that we do need professional help to guide us to make the right decisions. So if let's shoot, let's shoot okay. for it and see what they say. Actually, shoot for the I've moon and so figure under out how we're to approve the budget of uh, $339,584 for FY24. Uh, I'll second it. Make that motion. You got a second a motion and um all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Thank you. Um contract and services. Um, you know, we do have uh ten thousand still in grant MVP consultant. We've dropped that from twenty-five thousand last year. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see, network went up about 3,000. We doubled our training professional development because we have training professional development to do. So yes. that's from 4,000 to 8,000. Um, we took off the 10,000 from planning because we're moving this. Yes, we would move it into, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Thanks then, to Pat, we have a better deal on our, I our Comcast. Comcast. So that went down. Um, Let's see. So we have a few others that kind of dropped a bit, and then Softright we have at sixty three. Yeah, that's an that's an increase that's built into there. Right, and why service. is that in our budget and not in somebody else's? Because it benefits more than one department. Thank you. Okay, and then I it's a town cost, not an individual department cost, because you're covering more than one department. There is um, under that public health grant the whatever software we pick or permitting software we pick for board of health is going to be paid for by the grant oh good well it's, so here's the problem if you've got two different types of permitting software it's going to be more cumbersome i just want everybody to Does know right do permitting no oh okay we have um, actually have a capital request for that. I'm finishing up my capital request. Well, that's I, another thing a planner could help with studying what kind of software permitting uh, software we need well, and, it, and streamlining software throughout the uh, administrative function. Um, so some, somebody's well. Somebody's the issue is is we need to stay. It. It's costing us a lot of time without permitting software. Right. We put it off we need it. too yeah. long. Yeah. No doubt. Too long. But I, uh, but I'm just saying that the. The software for the Board of Health one is going to be paid for by the grant. So we and we have to buy except for maintenance. The other one. is maintenance going to be paid? Yes, for? and it needs. What? But we ha it, is it going to be a communal purchase by our little group? You know, well, who's going to use it? You, that's the thing. You're going to we're going to that's going to have to be coordinated yeah. with all the towns I using it. I know that's um, what I'm saying. I just I'm I'm nervous about somebody not taking charge of this and making the correct decision. The sewer utility billing is a negative 5,000. I think that would just be zero, right? No, because it's, um, oh, wait, we it gets balanced between sewer. They take it out of this budget and pay for it 
So she subtracts what the cost of the sewer billing is because it gets paid for out of the uh, enterprise fund. I'm just confused why there's a negative number. Because it doesn't get paid out of that budget. So she she subtracts so, it. But it gets paid out of a different budget. But it goes in here and then gets taken out? Yep. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Wouldn't it just be zero? Uh, I'm confused. Okay. It uh, seems like what it does is it lowers the final number. It does. Right. That's but exactly what it does. It gets paid somewhere else. Yeah, it gets paid out of another account. Funny money. It's... Um, Okay, and then that's just how it gets reflected in the budget. The permitting software of six thousand in here, and so that's maintenance costs. That's, that's maintenance. not the cost okay. for the request. The cost right. for the request is about forty thousand right now. Assessors mapping hosting. Now, is that something that would just be in the assessors thing, or because again, everybody uses it? So there's some product. elements of their software that okay. they pay directly. This is an element that benefits all of us. Right. So I know it's in contracted services. DPW uses it. Everybody right. uses it. Right. General code is there. Um, okay, and then uh, FCAP's here. So it looks like a nice, healthy number because we're down 71,000, but- The reason that is, is the engineering costs from the 50,000 we appropriated it right. special. I have, uh, I have a done. two e. Is Yours is in here, two sorry. Oh, yours okay. is in there. Sorry. I put it into your folder. All right, yeah. Because I had it. <laughs> Some yeah, yeah Brendan and I updated that late. <laughs> what am I looking at here? They do change off it, so you'll know yeah, no doubt. Time. Yeah. Well, the good news is this one went down yeah. 20 something percent. And right. so the fact that we're going up 30 percent in another place, it's going right. to wash it out. Hopefully. You know, we're going to end up we can use that as an explanation, yeah. right? <laughs> um, so entertain a motion to approve this one. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. And again, you'll I and that's for two hundred and sixty thousand three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Okay. Again, we just we're gonna have to talk about we this will. Software. all of this okay. will come back. Well, we need I, to I do something that's gonna work for multiple departments in, yep. in the past that yep. didn't work. And yeah. I know, and so the research we've done includes right. other types of permitting in the inspections office. So we're trying to be right. more in comprehensive. Okay. We're okay. just over eight o'clock. Is there any other, do you want town administrator's report? Do you want to hit on anything? Oh, before, before that, there's a placeholder, oh, on, placeholder on general appointments. Oh, thank I think, you. I think we discussed previously including a planning board member on the library uh, building committee. And I don't think there had been a decision on that person, but um, oh. uh, Annalie could tell me, but I think Denise well, Mason is willing. Denise Mason is going to is, do it. Yeah, willing to do it. And and it sort of is a great fit because she's also the chair of CCI. So right. I wanted to suggest, uh, you know, make a motion to appoint Denise and Mason as a planning that. board member. I, I did talk to her today. So she did talk, confirm to me. But she is we're not hard. signing up for something she doesn't yeah. know about. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay, I don't, she shows, I don't know if she's going to talk, but. And then okay. I just have one well, item. Let's wait one yeah. sec. Let's uh, all those in favor. Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, the, in the mail, going down to the mail, um, there was uh, some discussion about us coordinating with um, other communities like Cummington on this tree, on Eversource's tree cutting. And I, look. I sent Mike Kane an email. Because Eversource has, um, whenever we get these complaints, I sent Mike Kane, who's our rep, our community rep. I sent yeah. that to him, Lori's email. Um, and I asked him for some assistance. He's going to reach out to, um, I forget, it's in my email. I just read it before the meeting started. He's going to reach out to his folks at Eversource to help okay. explain what they do. All right, and I'm then just um, glad they're trimming the trees. Yeah, well, I, I just am. I know. Well, they have an uh, they have an arbor plant, right? But it just we have so well, many trees that are hanging over wires on so many. Of them. I don't think Love that's it. the problem. It's it's cutting people's trees in their yards. Oh, but gotcha. Um. No. Anyway, uh, uh, going down to items unanticipated. Um, Denise Mason was trying to set up a meeting for Friday. Um, at three o'clock here, and you would have to post it so that because the select board would be here. This is to organize for um, our meeting with Jim McGovern. You know, you know how we had like pre plan. It means we have to open the town hall, which means people bang at the door just for those 
if you have an, if out. you have a public meeting, it's got to be open. Of course, that's fine. Well, just the issue is for us. <laughs> just for just for this meeting, it's not open for doors. People can't. But that's what people assume. Shut. Well, that's well, why I keep bringing it up. Is people we'll assume we'll that. Tell them they're not available. Um, because we're still trying to get things done, and we don't open that window. Correct. Well, it on won't Fridays. be open. It yeah. won't be open. We this this is to get our sound bites together and to do a choreographed, you know, like we did last time. It was very effective. We only have a few. What minutes. time? Three p.m. Three it's too late to post a meeting. For what, it's Wednesday. Yeah, it's, it's Wednesday. Oh. oh. Well, we would have had to have known before three o'clock to post a meeting. So said too bad. Can I suggest a process um, going forward? Um, if we could, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, legally we can't do this. When we want to have a meeting at the last minute, can we say say we've got an hour to go before we got to post it by four o'clock or whatever? Yeah. Um, can we just get Chris to post a meeting and then if we can't do it, we just cancel it. I mean, uh, what's so there's the deal? Two ways you can do it. If you have an emergency, you have to deal with uh, the CMR allows for an emergency meeting. Right. Um, if you know, you're going to have a meeting, if you alert one of us, we can develop a quick agenda for you. But right. if we don't know before that time, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm trying to, um, out. we can't do that. Well, we can we, post we for Monday. Have yeah. But is the day before he comes. Well, I, I get it, but I can't. Uh, 48 hours Denise is 48 hours. Amazing. I can't Denise fix that. would like to speak. All right, go ahead. We will allow no. to speak. Hello. Hey, when I talked with Carolyn, it's not, it's not a meeting. We're not making these big decisions. It was more of a work meeting. So yeah, just, just meeting not meeting with you, it has to be posted. Yeah. It needs to be posted. It um, does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's many of the things that Denise and I also talked separately about, like what I'm going to pull together, what she's going to pull together. And, and, you know, maybe we'll have to just, I'm not going to be there yeah, because I'm working, yeah. but if you guys gather stuff and then one of you, meet, mm -hmm. here's my thought. If you guys have documents you want to share, send them through me or Chris, we'll send mm -hmm. them out. You send okay. your comments back Denise, to us. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to sign people stuff. Just like, right. all right. Well, okay, Caroline, I was going to say, I already spoke with um, Kate Lawless. I got information from her for the town common that Trevor can use. Yeah. I was going to talk about the 1821 building. Tim was going to talk about the 1828 library and the um, yeah. sewer. Caroline, you're going to talk about senior center. So what I thought is we we're going to get together you know, give, you know, have all the documents. I'm happy to put them together or work with Tim to do that. We can always do this on Monday too. Yeah. Or you can send me documents. I can put them together and work with Tim on that. Yeah. And, and whatever. Because I want, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to do one comprehensive document with the different categories, put them in folders to give to Jim McGovern. Are you are you coming in for the um, CIPC meeting at five o'clock on Monday? It was being suggested that we could post for Saturday if if people wanted. We to. had to. We have time to post for Saturday. We could do Saturday. I'm happy to do that. And yeah, I'm doing CIPC, but I didn't realize is is that going to be hybrid or in person? I think it's going to be in person. Oh, yeah, we would do it in. Okay. So we can so do it we could hybrid. so we could we could post for four o'clock. We don't need a whole more than an hour. So if we post well, for four o'clock. You and I have to be here. That's when I eat. You know, <laughs> I want to have to be able to digest after we're speeding. Is that is that the early bird dinner, Tim? No, it's like uh, you know, I got to relax after an hour and a half. These places. Well, look, I got. I have to go. I have to go from to my mosquito. I have time to go from my mosquito meeting to meet with Denise and the rest of us on this other meeting, and then oh. we can CP CIPC, and then we got the CIC meet. CI. I know. I know. This is my time job. Is this all on Saturday, Carolyn? No, this is on Monday. I have a do you, me, do you, she does have a lot of meetings. We're talking about Saturday. Do you want Let's, to get together on Saturday? I'm happy to do that. You, you don't want to do that. That's fine. Well, I'm no, fine. Thinking that gives gonna, us time to post, though. How, if we, yeah, if we, yeah. If we post. Tell me what time you guys want to post. To a five o'clock meeting. And we I'm, have a 30 meeting. Carolyn, that may be too much. Do you want it? Can you guys do it on Saturday? I'm available anytime. Um, 
I think Madeline's game is at noontime. So yeah. it would either have to be the morning or the Saturday is the, is the 11th. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I yeah, many I, days to this town already. I don't care. I, I can do Monday. I don't, you know. Let's, Denise, if we have to be here for five o'clock, let's just come here for four o'clock. Okay. You, All right. You guys can do Did four o'clock. Usually my mosquito meeting is only an hour. Well, yeah. Okay. So four o'clock. So between four o'clock Monday, the end of Monday, because it's going to be very busy. So I'll have to put all of this. To, what I wanted to do is get everyone's thing. Um, make sure it's in the same font, put it all together into one document. We don't need to post a meeting for that. You can talk to us individually. She can talk through. Uh, you can call okay. me. You can call Tim. Okay, then you, then, then you, if you, you already know. got, you already talked to Kate Lawless. You already got T Trevor's thing already. Well, yeah. So you just yeah. have to call him and tell him what he's going to say. <clears throat> a rough <laughs> draft. <laughs> okay. When are we well, okay. Through? Then if you guys can... Send me all. Send me all your stuff over the weekend. Send me all, all what what you're going to say. I'll put it together, and then we'll go over that on Monday. And then if we need to make adjustments, we can do that. The only thing I wanted to clarify is I was supposed. I thought I was supposed to talk about senior housing. You said just you are. center. Yeah, you are senior center and senior housing. Oh no, no I'm, I'm sorry. I meant senior housing. Okay, I'm doing senior housing and the farm bill, right? And that should be in a document. So you can send that okay. to me. Send me whatever you're going to say. Right. Tim, send me your stuff. Trevor, I've got your stuff. Okay. From yeah, okay. Wait, isn't Trevor Perfect. doing more than the town common? He's I, I have no idea what else he's doing. Load me up, whatever you need. I'm well, good. you know, again, we've got to think how, how much time do we have with, with Jim? Not a lot. Maybe 45 minutes at top. No, we have to keep it the same. Last time was successful. We have to right, do it exactly. Time. Yeah. So I thought if we have all that, then then on Monday we can decide who goes first, and you know just go through the whole thing. Okay. 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 I'll okay. get with Julie and and sort out the senior housing thing. I, okay. I have notes from my New England meeting on the farm bill. Okay. Okay. So you know what you're saying, who you're, what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm Pretty sure that I'm talking about the library in the 1880s. Yes, <laughs> and then 1888 what and the um, who's on first? And 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 are, what are you doing? <laughs> and the geothermal, Tim. Oh, the geothermal. You know what? I'll talk to each of you separately. Yeah, geothermal. Okay. That's me. All right, we'll figure all this stuff out later. Yeah. Um, Perfect. It, I'm gonna thank post you for a hybrid so much, just in Denise, case for all your help on that. that. Perfect. Casey, do you have um? A, a I do. Short, I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> Um, both Joe and Natalie want to schedule meetings to talk to you guys. I don't know if we could put them together on the same day, but it might be useful. Um, so I was going to have on Tuesday, you mean? Or um, no? Out of courtesy, no, a oh, day, just it. they want to go over. <laughs> out of okay. courtesy, could you let them know that Jim McGovern's going to be here? Yeah, I, I, I notified them. Yeah, Tim okay. sent a message. Oh, okay. Because yep. I didn't. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Tim handled most of that. So I thought if we could figure out how to have them both come. Yes. Because they coordinate they so do. many things together. And the, yeah. And I didn't throw That's it out there because I that. wanted to talk to you guys first. Whatever works. Um, so I'll ask Chris to throw it out there. Okay. Um, we're working on the vacancy for the assistant treasure collector Great. position. I'm anticipating it'll go up tomorrow. Um, where I've been working with CIPC, particularly the chair on the capital requests. We have a meeting scheduled for the 13th at five. And I should have everything pulled together to be able to be sent out by Friday morning at the latest. Um, I am going to print copies. Depends on how fast I get them done, whether they go in the foyer or you'll be able to find them here. I'm not quite sure because most members want to see paper. Did you it, say there was a meeting? What time did you say? It's at five o'clock on Monday. A five on Monday. Um, it's capital and... Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark pushed it back because both Carolyn and Denise have a CCI meeting. Well, Tim too. And Tim too, but you guys all have a CCI meeting, but yeah, it's 630. they sit on Capitol. So um, we should have, I'm, I've worked on this schedule um, and I'm going to send that out. I'll send it out, send it out as one document, but then print it for you guys. Um, I've been working with council on several contracts and on litigation, some HR issues and some permanent questions, just so people know that's one of the couple of the things I've been doing. 
these hiring and onboarding activities, as well as training and assisting other departments to coordinate their processes. Um, Chris has been helping we, me with that, but we're trying to pull stuff together so that more than one person knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, especially since planning board's pretty complicated, working with Amy in particular. Um, there's a lot of projects. So the meeting with DOT, uh, we had to, we got interrupted by the weather in January. So I still need a couple of people to give me their grant, their availability to have this meeting. And then we have to factor in Joe and Natalie. Um, Joe's definitely coming. She just, we need to figure out her schedule. Um, the grant development, Denise and I have been working with Alice Rich Lewis on the grant development for our, on our project for Community One Stop and another grant um, that could help support some of the activities with these buildings we've got going on. And the lead on working with USDA for the financial work, and, and that's really to get to this first loan. Brenda's been lead on that, but we're gonna have to work together. And I, she's got a meeting with um, Margaret McLean, who's our financial advisor next week. And then I wanted to let everybody know the town report is due on the 13th of March oh, in order for us to God, stay on I'll task on it. because we have a timeline for that. I, I talked to Pat about it, but I came up with a timeline so that we could have it ready the week before town meeting. Um, so I just wanted to remind you that that's the deadline. Um, Trevor has been really good about well now we have a writer so yes yeah. yes i will i will get something started and have a have some, have and we can add the town report tim oh, town report. you just got yeah. elected didn't even realize it <laughs> no i'm just the editor on this <laughs> that's no, right yes. no i'll, I'll get Tre it. trevor it's been really okay. good the last few years trevor's written uh, you know the the basic draft yeah and, yeah and yeah. everybody's been editing it so yep. it's really nice thank you sure and so that's the brief um, I'm not, I'm not trying to bug you, Casey. Which one? How There's are you projects. Doing, <laughs> how are you doing on the educational waiver? material? Okay. So that we oh, did send that out last year. Chris and I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk about it. I found the conveyance letter that we used two years ago, I think, but we really, we had the data set up. The issue is, is refining what we needed from Waitley and I think the there's, update the problem we need is from the assessors no, is what's come no, off the tax rolls. There's no postmaster at South Deerfield right now. Okay. So you just have to have, you just ask them, you have Chris just call down there and say that you just need the Waitley residentials um, addresses pulled off. Okay. Our zip code. All right. And the reason why you have to do that is because there is no you know, you got to give them some time to do that because I, there is no, it's a vacant position right now down there. I wonder if wait, we could do it. I, because they know what the residential addresses are too. Okay. Well, we got to We got to get that part done. And then, um, did she did, give you a timeline when you were at the MMA? Well, yes, because she, you know, the governor's budget is everybody's getting it done by the end of the month. So we, we can't ask for the waiver until the budget has been proposed okay and that's how you're what you know is going to be chapter 70 money mm -hmm. all right but we got to get all our stuff ready so that we can tell lisa that we're all ready and 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 send it down there so it's sitting on her desk and that needs to happen the next i don't know 10 days or so you know well, the governor's the budget month, isn't coming out until no 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 but it, it we we need she needs to know that we're going to apply for she has to have official notification that we're applying for the waiver and then we can give her all the information so it's just sitting there and and remember da has two you know they they just bought uh that's what house. we need from the assessors yeah and so there's been three new additional houses at least and that we are all, we are asking for um all the non remember we're taking all the nonprofit make sure it's all nonprofit, not just right the last time we did it we did it with all the nonprofit. all nonprofit, all incomes associated with nonprofit addresses own property okay 
Mm -hmm. Anything else? Or do you want to? Lots of red instructions here. No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Not really, but it got the, uh, to I hit the high points. Let's go with high points. Done two, I, two hours, 20 minutes. So I know. Are we good? I, yeah. So you're all set then? Yeah. Okay. I'll call you if okay. I have any questions, but all I'll right. make myself a note. Entertain the motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Tim. I will second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nuss, aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for staying Thank for you the for whole meeting. And making Thank it you for staying and making it through. We Denise, appreciate the small Kelly. support. Thank you. We really appreciate people being participants. You know what? You can have my packet. I, I'm just curious. No, I'm you can have my